Hello grade nines and welcome to uh, another online math lesson. Uh, today I'm going to keep it really quick, really short, because I think a lot of this will be a review and I'm going to have you watch some other videos made by people that aren't me. Um, but there's a few things they didn't talk about that I wanted to make sure we covered. I think they just assumed we remembered that and I'm sure you guys do, but we're going to make sure that you do remember it. So this will be a quick review, I think, um, on transformations. So transformations are just any time we have a point and we take that point and we move it somewhere else. We're transforming it. You've heard, you know what the word transform means. It means to change into something different. And that's what we're doing with uh, points in math right now, or shapes even. Um, when we do these types of things, we do it on this bad boy right here, the Cartesian plane or coordinate points, as you might uh, usually remember um, this box as uh associated with. Um, we're talking more about this box in a second, but there'll be three types of transformations we look at over the next couple days. Um, and those are translations. And translations is just simply taking a point and moving it somewhere else. Uh, reflections. So that is taking a point and reflecting it like a mirror uh, over a certain line or a, another spot on your Cartesian plane. And then finally, we'll look at rotations. And that's where you have a point or a shape. And then there's another fixed point that you're going to rotate that shape around to get different locations. And we're going to tie this back into how we can create symmetry using these types of transformations. So before we go on any further, let's take a quick look uh, more closely at this Cartesian plane. Um, the first thing you're going to notice when you sit down here is that it's got two axes or two lines going across and you're pretty familiar with these the horizontal one being the x-axis and that horizontal axis tells us where a point or position of a shape is on the horizontal so the flat line and the way I always remember horizontal versus vertical is think of looking at a horizon and you're watching a big beautiful sun rise up on that horizon. Um, you watch the sun rise up over the flat line. You don't riot, watch it rise up from the side. You riot, watch it rise up from the flat line. So horizontal, the horizon is the flat line. Oops, hopefully that can help you remember that going forward because then we also have the y-axis. That's going up and down. And the y-axis, uh, like we said, tells us where the position of a point is vertically. So how high up or how far down is it um, when we go to position it? Um, you'll notice that both the x-axis and the y-axis have negative and positive values to it. So x-axis, any points that are to the right of the origin or the center point here are positive. And any points that are to the left of the origin or the center point are negative. When we look at the y, any points that are above or up of the origin of the center point are positive, and any points that are below the origin are negative. And we need to remember this when we're plotting points. So when we have a point, let's pretend we have one right here. There's, and let's call this, sorry, let's call this point A. And I ask you to tell me what the coordinates are of this point. It's a really important way we do this. So right on the side A, we take our points and we put them inside brackets separated by a comma. Which one comes first though and which one comes second? The x value always comes first. So our x value, our point is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive because it's on the right side away from the origin. And for our second point, our y value, our point is 1, two, three, four up from the origin. And that is the point, or the coordinates of our point A. Now if I did another point down over here, and let's call that one B, I'll write over here again B. Um, once again, we're gonna put a brackets, we're gonna put a column in the middle, we're gonna put our X value first, and it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six away from the origin. But this time, since we're moving left, we're gonna have negative six for our x value. And we are down one, two, 
from the origin on the vertical. So since we're going down, that will be a negative 2y value. So hopefully this is a quick little reminder. I think you guys probably remember how to do this, but that's okay just in case of how to uh, plot or how to get coordinate points for um, on the on the Cartesian plane. Now one little thing that's important to remember and will help you is to notice that the Cartesian plane is divided into four quadrants. One, two, three, and four. And you'll notice that any point in quadrant one will always have a positive x value and will always have a positive y value. And any point that's in quadrant two will always have a negative x value and still a positive y value. Any point in quadrant three will have a negative x value and a negative y value. And any point that's in quadrant four will have a positive x value and a negative y value. And I always find that really helpful. Um, so if they give you a point, you can look at it right away and say, okay, I know that's going to be in quadrant one, or I know that's going to be in quadrant three. Um, so just a thing to remember there as well. Now when we're doing translations. We talked about translations just being the simple movement of a point from one place to another. Um, but there's a bunch of different ways you can write this. So I want to just quickly talk about all th all three of those, and then I'll send you on your way. So let's say we have our point right here, and let's call it once again point A. Hopefully that looks like an A to you. And I said that we were going to translate point A to right here. And this will be our second point A. Now when we have transformed any point, we write it as the same letter as it was before, A, A, we put a little dash up there, and that means prime, A prime. That is the transformed point of the original A. So we know that we moved it from here to here, but what would that look like? So the first way we can write that is point A with a translation, uh, or yeah, translation of, now x value comes first, and we moved 1, 2, 3, 4 over. So we moved positive 4, 4 to the right, comma, what happened to our y value? We moved down 1, 2. So since we're moving down, that should be a negative value of negative 2. So this right here is point A with a translation of four, positive 4 in the x and negative 2 in the y. It's one way to write out a translation. Another way is using letters. So r equaling right. So please forgive my poor writing with my little pen. L equaling left. Oof, brutal. U is up and D is down. So for this one, we would write, we moved right four steps. So we would say, actually, let's use a different color just to separate it here a bit. We would say that we moved R four and we moved D2. And you don't have to write a negative on that. We know that if we're moving D down, that's a negative. Just like if it was an L for left, you wouldn't have to write L negative 4. We know that moving left is a negative movement. And the last way that we can write it is simply as X. Um, with a, So it would be a translation with an X minus Oh, sorry, not x minus, x plus 4, and y of minus 2. A translation of x plus 4 and y minus 2. All three of these things, sorry, I should have used a different color for this as well in the middle. I should have uh, separated them better, but you can tell the lines are separating the different uh, methods. And all three of these methods, one, two, three, are different ways of writing the exact same transformation or translation. And when you're doing your assignments later today, you're going to see different ways of writing it, and now you'll understand. But do not forget that when they ask you a question, that the letter with the prime on it, that little dash up above, is the one that has been translated. And the one with no prime is your original point, where the point started and where it moved to with the prime.
So let's do a quick little example here. If we have this shape here, and let's call it triangle one, two, three. And I want you to do a translation of right three and up two. Or also could write this as triangle translation of positive three, positive two, or I could also write this as, let's separate these again, um, a triangle with a translation of x plus three and y plus two. To translate a full shape, all we're going to do is we're going to take point one here and we're going to move it one, two, three right and one, two up. And we're going to take point two here and we're going to go one, two, three, oh, right, and one, two, up. And we're going to take point three and we're going to go one, two, three, and we're going to move it one, two, up to right, oh, my bad, to right there. Let's make these points a little bit bigger for us. And let's make sure we don't forget to label them. This is one prime, this is two prime, and this is three prime. We could even try and use this straight line tool to connect them there, there, and there. So there's our translated triangle. We moved it right three and up two. And that's our finished translation. It's as simple as that, guys. Don't forget to rewrite your letter or your uh, points out one, two, three with the prime in the corner to know that they are the translated triangle and not the original triangle. So with that being said, here's the homework today. So today, things a little bit different. Um, there's an online lesson and some practice problems on Khan Academy. Uh, I was having a really tough time figuring out how to be able to help you draw these things and s actually see that you've done it properly. Um, but this uh, website has a lot of built-in tools where you can draw and type in coordinates, and it's really, really handy for things like this. So we'll probably use this quite a bit going through our uh, transformations, translations lessons. Um, you should be able to just open the link to Khan Academy and log in using your Google account and everything will be there uh, right away for you. I've converted our Google Classroom over. Um, if you have any problems with this at all, uh, email me tomorrow and I'll be checking. I'll get back to you really quickly and we can set up a Google Meet if we need to and get that ready to rock and roll. Um, so like I said, I kind of already covered this, but signing up for this, all the information for that is on Google Classroom. I kind of just covered it a little bit uh, right now. Um, so with that being said, guys, work through all those lessons. I think there's about three videos and then three or four little assignments to go through. It shouldn't take too, too long. Um, good luck, guys, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.